You. You finally came. Yeah, I've been waiting for so long. Come. Quickly. Destroy me. Sure. Whatever. With your poor power. I thought you were gonna say poison here. Would have been a nice Britney Spears, uh, like reference. Hi, Odenwa, Ariato Gozaimasu, Junk Shop, Hebon des. Hello, thank you for calling Humdrum Junk. How may I be of service? I... I have a quick question. Also, I'm gonna shut off, like, the voices so that I can actually narrate over him. Go right ahead. Do you carry custom parts for S2 type all mates? Yeah, we do. We happen to have some in stock right now. Oh, really? I see. Thank you very much. Would you like to place an order? Ah, no. Well... Sir? Well, I know how this is gonna sound, but... Yeah? I was just wondering, maybe we could meet up after work today. I excuse me! Yo, no, uh, how should I put it? It's that voice. You have a very nice voice, is all. Yeah, thank you. I'm very flattered. By the way, sir, I just thought of something that might interest you. Oh? Sure. You mentioned S2 type custom parts. Turns out we're expecting a shipment of brand new parts for that series soon. Uh huh. Yeah, we just so happen to be accepting pre-orders, but only for our most loyal customers. Would you be interested? It looks like they're going to be popular. I wouldn't be surprised if they sell out right away. If you pre-order now, you won't have to worry about missing out. No, oh, but uh... Yeah, of course, because this opportunity is only for our most special customers. If you do place an order, yeah, I could do something a little extra for you. I extra? Yeah, extra. No. Oh. Then by all means, I'll pre-order. Fantastic. If you could just send your personal data over. Thank you very much. Your pre-order has been placed. We hope you'll continue shopping with us in the future. Yeah, of course. Thank you. <sighs> I hung up the phone and let out a huge sigh. Even when I know th what they're up to, dealing with customers who want something other than spare parts is always a pain. The voice is so wonderful. I just have to meet you. I get this sort of thing over the phone surprisingly often. Just hearing my voice makes them want to meet me. What kind of guy says that to another guy? In the beginning, I just shrugged it off, but it really started to bother me after a while. Then one day, out of frustration, I tried using it to push product, and it worked. Ever since, I've used it to improve my sales. That phone call just now was a good example. Strangely enough, it just doesn't happen in person. Some customers have actually come looking for me after a call. I always pretend like I don't know what they're talking about. They all leave without realizing that I'm the person they spoke to over the phone. Nothing bad has actually happened. So I figure, no harm, no foul. <sighs> okay, the manager should be back soon. While stretching, I glance at a digital clock on my counter. This humdrum junk. A shop that carries everything from basic supplies to specialized pots. All at rock bottom prices. The dorky name was what drew me in. Just how long has it been since I started working here anyway? A while, that's for sure. Huh? Got a message. I'm leaning on the counter, spacing out, when the coil on my arm beeps. The coil is like a mobile phone, but better. You can make calls, send texts, watch TV, pay for things, even use it as an ID, all in one little machine. Let's see. Hello? Please save me. Damsel in distress? Is this some new viral ad? Like the adult kind? Yeah, I'm sure the rest of it say something like, I'm in trouble, only a big strong man like you can save me. Delete. Ah! Suddenly something slabs into my side. I fall from a chair and something heavy lands on my back. Three voices giggle overhead. I know right away who it is. I hope us wide open! Like a buck. So lame. No. Neighborhood brats. 
Why, you little? It's Kyo, Nao, and Mio. A trio of siblings from the neighborhood whose only purpose, it seems, is to make my life hell. How many times have I told you this isn't a playground? Don't you kids listen? Hey, all of us looking at a dirty e- It's not a dirty email, it's, it's just like an ad or something. Huh? No way. Now I must have gotten a look at my coil. The other two climb up my back, try to get a peek. Can't breathe. Get off me, you idiots. Dirty email, dirty email. Aoba's a pervert. Grown-ups are dirty. Nuh-uh. I bet it's someone wanting to buy bad stuff because this shop is so sketchy. Sketchy, sketchy. This shop sucks. Ugh. I know. Let's arrest o o Aoba for being a pervert and sketch. Yeah. You're under arrest. Get, get off me already, you brat. <laughs> I jump up, shake him off. I'm not going to hold back just because they're kids. If I thought scolding him would accomplish anything, I'd do it. But this bunch doesn't give a rat's butt what I have to say. Hey, what's that thing on the top of the shelf? It's probably for beating people up. It's scary. Boys are mean. As I expected, their attention had already moved on to other things. You guys, don't shoot. The screen of my coil catches my eye. Download complete. The hell? I do recall it making a weird noise earlier. Maybe I accidentally pushed a button while I was wrestling with the brats. I hope I didn't download some weird program. Just what I needed. Before I can investigate, the old-fashioned bell on the front door rings. <sighs> the deliveries were all over the place today. It's Mr. Haga, the owner. Uh, hi. Sorry I took so long, Aoba. Mr. Haga's smile vanishes as soon as he sees the kids. I guess that's a natural reaction when you consider the kind of damage they always do. Oh, it's you three. Hello. Kyo, grab the thing. Wait a sec. Here. Yeah. You're too short. What'd you say? Now, children. It's dangerous to play inside the shop. You might get hurt. But the brats aren't listening. Just a little more. Yeah. Ch children. Yeah, it's so annoying. Shut up, Baldy. <laughs> Whoops. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. The temperature in the room suddenly drops 10 degrees. Dear sweet children, I hate to be a bother. But what did you just say? Oh, no, I don't think he likes being called Baldy. Come on, say it again. The first syllable was ba. 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 I'm bad. I feel bad. My stomach hurts. I'm so going home. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. The evil trio dashes from the store. Ba. What came up to your ba? Ba what? Hey, boss. I just remembered. Good news. I scramble for words that'll snap him out of it. We've been getting tons of orders for the S-Series. A parts. Parts. Yeah, you're amazing. It's just like you said, sales are up 50% from last month. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is. Things are looking up. Sales are doubling. Sales are doubling? Well, that is good news. We should stock some more if they're selling that well. I breathe a sigh of relief. That was close. There's no telling what Mr. Haga might do once something sets him off. Finally calm, he strains his glasses and gives me a tired smile. Goodness, those children are nothing but trouble, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. It might be cute if they weren't such troublemakers. You said it. No matter how many times I've seen it happen, it's always startling when his personality does a 180 like that. Alright. Mr. Haga walks to the counter and grabs a paper bag from the floor. I hate to ask you to do this, but would you mind dropping this off with the courier service? You can head on home after that. Are you sure? Yeah, in fact... I'm expecting someone soon, so I thought I'd close up early today. Hey, I'll take care of it. I shoulder my bag and take the package from Mr. Haga. From the label, it looks like it's going pretty far. Fortunately, getting in there is the courier's job, not mine. I'm off then. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Be careful. I head outside. According to my coil, it's 3 p.m. The back streets are full of people. There are several routes I could take to get to the courier. Well, considering which would be fastest, I reach into my shoulder bag and pull out a soft, furry lump. The ball of fur is still asleep. He pressed my palm against his forehead to wake him up. 
Ren, wake up! <laughs> He's so cute! At the sound of his name, he probably opens his eyes. Alba. And he gets a courier. He give me the quickest route. Understood. It speaks! Ren gently touches my upper arm with his paws. Road 241 East is blocked for police inspection. Buses are cancelled for maintenance. It'll be quicker to bypass the north terminal. Thanks. I pat Ren on the head. He barks and wags his tail. Let's get going. Oh. Ooh. I put on my headphones and push play. Well, that was cool. If that didn't get cut out, uh, well, that means, like, I managed to keep that in the game. Otherwise, anyway. As everyone in the old residential district knows, the best way to get around is on foot. Public transportation here is pretty bad. Technically, there are buses, trains, and even taxis available, but they can be cancelled or delayed without notice. Even the roads themselves might be closed without notice, so you hardly see any cars around here these days. At most, you might see taxis waiting in vain, or the occasional junker parked on the side of the road. The sidewalks, on the other hand, are always packed. Nothing's more reliable than your own two legs. The old residential district is divided into north, south, east, and west quarters. They're similar, but have some key differences. For example, both my home and humdrum junk are located in the east quarter. It's pretty safe compared to the other quarters, and it's easy to get your hands on whatever you need. The North Quarter has become something of a ghost town ever since it was designated off-limits. It's definitely not the safest place to go. The West Quarter is primarily residential, like the East Quarter, but it doesn't have as many stores. The South Quarter is an entertainment and shopping district, so it's always full of youngsters hanging out. And if you go further north, up past the North Quarter, there's Platinum Jail, where the rich and famous do their business. Platinum Jail? Why, why are the rich and famous doing business there? Platinum Jail is members only resort. Oh, it's a resort? Where that the Toei Corporation, one of Japan's top five companies, built when they bought um, Midori Jima. If the rumors are true, that place is the definition of luxury. Center around the giant oval tower, it's full of casinos, movie theaters, shopping malls, hotels, everything you can imagine. Membership is by invitation only, but even then, the membership fee alone costs more than this whole island's worth. Well, so I've heard. Obviously, no one from the old residential district will ever get into Platinum Jail. So, I guess you could call this town a slum. Nobody cares what happens here. The police are all talk. They're in bed with Yakuza and just do whatever they please. It's not like we can do anything about it. Even if we're unhappy, we just have to suck it up and deal with it. Despite all that, as the saying goes, there really is no place like home. This town isn't so bad once you get used to it. Well, it may not be an extravagant as Platinum Jail, we have our own way of life, 
our own kinds of fun. Can't really ask for much more than that. Ayoba! Ayoba! Ren pokes his head out of the bag and taps my arm with his paw. What's the matter? You're thinking too much. Your logic processor will short circuit. Wait, is this a cyberpunk world? Seriously? Just how crappy is this logic processor of mine anyway? If we rate the logic processor of an average male at 100, then yours would rate at... Wait, I don't want to hear it. You'll make me short circuit for real. Yo. I chuckle and pat his head. Ren is a dog type all mate. All mates are artificially intelligent life forms, generally used to augment network devices like coils. They can search the internet and virtual space for information, place orders for you in online stores, or manage your social media accounts. Some models can also help around the house, while others can act like partners in an online game called Rhyme. There are many different kinds of all mate. Animal models are abundant, so many people keep them as pets. I've had Ren for a long time. I'm not exaggerating when I say he's my best friend. Even if all the improvements and new models coming out, I'll never abandon Ren. Not even if hell freezes over. If you want to take a shortcut, turn right the next street. Whoa, that was close. Almost missed it. I follow Ren's directions down an alley off Aoyagi Street. Aoyagi Street runs through the center of the old residential district, dividing the district into quarters. It's lined with shops selling discount appliances, while the back streets are littered with niche hobby shops. As I make my way down the alley, a group of guys leaning against a filthy wall catches my eye. They have a certain look, like the kind of guys who'd be passing around a silver drug sheet. It really makes you wonder what's wrong with kids these days. Once upon a time, though, I was just like them. Yeah, not that I'm old or anything. Anyway, I'm finished with that stuff. Totally. As I walk past, I catch a bit of that conversation. So yeah, it's really happening. People are getting brain jacked. What the hell are you talking about? Getting forced into rhyme? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You'd just be walking down the street and a match will start against a strong opponent too. But wouldn't that mean there's no Usui? Can you even play rhyme without Usui? Sounds like you can. I know how it works. How can you fight if you're not ready? Can't you decline the challenge? Not from what I hear. It's a total ganking. You get your butt handed to you like that. That's some scary stuff, man. They're talking about rhyme. The online fighting game that's all the rage these days. By connecting their minds to the net, players can experience virtual combat that feels like the real thing. The thing is, there's no schedule or anything that tells you when or where the battle's about to happen. Wherever Usui, the game judges, appears, it adds where the battlefield is. Rhyme started off as an indie game back then. The rules were more relaxed, and Usui wasn't around either. It steadily gained popularity, and eventually, Toei became a major sponsor. The system was improved and Usui was added, along with an official set of rules, making Rhyme what it is today. I don't play Rhyme, so it really isn't my business. I head through the alley and come out once more in the Aoyagi streets. In the air of the street, I see a sign for the courier shop. Just as I start towards it, I notice a crowd in the middle of the road. It looks like a fight, a bunch of people and nothing better to do have gathered to watch. I keep walking, trying to avoid the whole mess, but then the crowd stirs, followed by a high screech, followed by a high-pitched scream. Huh? I peer through the gaps in the crowd. A large man is sprawled out on the ground, not just standing over him. The second man had his back to me. I recognize him immediately. A bright red kimono and a big sword. There's no one else it could be. For a big guy, you sure went down easy. Way to make a fool out of yourself in front of your girlfriend. Kojaku! He's so cool and so dreamy. Starry eyed girls flock to the victor, trampling the man on the ground in the process. Here we go again. Uh, I'm really sorry. One woman, who was keeping a bit of a distance, approaches with an apologetic bow. This is all because I told him I wanted you to do my hair. What do you think you are? Yeah, wait, wait your turn. She must be the girlfriend of a man sprawled in the street. I'm guessing the commotion started when they tried to cut in line at Kojaku's shop. Coming his angry fans with a gesture, Kojaku gives her girlfriend a smile. I'm glad you think so highly of my skills, miss, but all my customers are important. We can't have people cutting in line, you know. I know. Your boyfriend might have taken things too far, but he was doing it for you. Don't be too hard on him, okay? Anyway, come back later. I'll hook you up. Thank you! The woman's eyes sparkle, her cheeks turning bright red. 
There goes another one. Kojaku's other fans are not amused. Hey, how long are you gonna stand there? Move! Oh, Kojaku, you must be sweaty. I just bought this handkerchief, but you're welcome to use it. Ah, I couldn't. You bought it for yourself, right? Keep it. Please, I'm sure my handkerchief will be honored. Oh, what kind of man would I be if I said no to that? Kojaku takes the woman's hand, pulling her towards him with a smile. Thanks, I'll make good use of it. Yeah. There it is, this infamous lady killer smile. Well, that's what I call it, at least. <laughs> the woman with the handkerchief slumps to her knees, attracting jealous glares from the others. Every woman here seems out for blood. Let's get out of here. This isn't the first time I've seen this shtick. Disgusted, start to move away from the crowd. Aoba? Ugh! I can feel all those eyes focusing on me. I'll pretend I didn't hear him. I turn around and stop walking at a brisk pace. Hey! Hold up! A Kojaku runs up to me and grabs my arm. Here we go again. Ah, oh, you freaking... Oh, you hottie! I knew it! Yo. What's with a cold shoulder? You should have said something. Yeah, I was just passing by on a job. A delivery? Kojaku smiles indulgently, which of course makes the women around him swoon again. It smiles like a weapon. He's been using it for ages, but women still fall for it. I really don't feel like talking here. There are way too many people around, and the women's eyes are scaring me. Aren't you supposed to be working? I guess I might be hard with all this. Yeah, this guy thought he could skip the line. I took care of it. You know, if you don't cut this stuff out, sooner or later, someone's gonna cut you. Cut me? Who would do that? Just take a look around you. I see my gaze over the women glaring at me. It was clear that they weren't about to let anyone, man or woman, get close to Kojaku. Scary. Oh well, I'll be fine. I really look like such an easy target. Kojaku punctuates this with a smug. Seriously? Well, I guess I can't argue with him there. Kojaku's pretty much always been aware of how handsome and popular he is. He's not a type to brag about it, but he has a casual confidence about him, and he knows his way around a fight. He's a wandering hairdresser. All he does is cut and style women's hair, but apparently he's developed quite a reputation for it. He sets up shop wherever and whenever it feels like it. He doesn't advertise or take reservations, but he always has a line around the block. They all say that when Kojaku touches your hair, it feels like you've died and gone to heaven. Yeah, I just don't get it. If you told me a guy like this existed, I wouldn't believe you for a second if I didn't already know him. Anyway, as you cool it with the play routine, how many hearts do you think you've broken? Easier said than done, bro. Now I'm gonna turn down in the offer. Women are one of life's greatest pleasures, yeah? Beautiful, sexy, you gotta treat them right. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cool! I love you! Whatever floats your boat, I gotta get going. Right. Kujaku, hurry! Hey, it's my turn next! <sighs> as soon as I end the conversation, the women swarm Kujaku. He shoots me a look from the center of the crowd. Oh, almost forgot. Tell Miss Tay I said hi. He'll swing by again soon. Yeah, sure. I shrug and walk off. Still, the guy never gets enough, huh? I mean, he must like it. I know I would hate to be the center of all that attention. Guess he's a special breed. I head for the courier, leaving the crowd behind. Delivery works. There it is. I step through the automatic doors. Welcome! Oh! Hey, Opa, dear! I'm happy to see you again. You too. I bow to Miss Yoshie and set a paper bag on the counter. A small dog with a long, shiny fur sits proudly on the counter, watching me intently. That's Clara, Miss Yoshie's all mate. I'd like to send this. Certainly. Let me take that for you. Miss Yoshie checks the address with practiced hands and pushes a nearby button. A box next to the counter opens. She tosses the bag inside. This outfit specializes in delivering packages within the old residential district, a welcome service in a town where transportation isn't readily available. In any case, my work here is done. Thanks. I'll see you later. Are you heading back to the store? No, I'm heading home. Miss Haga said he'd be closing up early today. Oh, well, it's not lovely. The final episode of EWTR is tonight. You can watch it live. EW... What? Oh, come on. Did I tell you about it the other day? Uh, right. Uh, what was it again? 
It's a soap. A soap opera. A waltz to remember. Today, she's finally going to decide on her partner. I'm totally rooting for Kaiser Matsuoka. That easy smile is just to die for. Not to mention his slight sadistic streak. Uh-huh. Miss Yoshie twirls her hair around her fingers with a dreamy, girlish look in her eyes. I mean, she's not a bad person or anything. Uh, I'd better be... By the way, dear, have you heard? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Maybe you don't. Miss Yoshie beckons me closer. A serious look on her face. She's really not a bad person. Swallowing a resigned sigh, I lean closer. There are no other people in the shop, but for some reason, she speaks in a whisper. You know, Hyogatani in the north, the bad part of town? You never hear anything good about that place, but lately, the rumors have been particularly nasty. Yeah? Apparently, there's a gang there led by a man who escaped from death row. Ugh, scratch, right? I heard he's put together some really bad guys. Yeah, that's him! They say the gang is entirely escaped criminals. Actually, weren't some people kidnapped in that area a little while back? That's so scary. We can't even go out alone at night. We can't depend on the police at all. I mean, it can be just as bad. What an awful world we live in. She's not wrong about that. The old residential district police are no better than gangsters themselves. Grab an officer the wrong way and you can get beaten or even arrested. Oh no, should I hurry back home before it gets too late? I mean, what will I do if someone tries to have their way with me? <laughs> hey, hey, ma'am, 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 I think you'll be fine. I mean, you're a beautiful woman, but I think you'll be safe around these parts. What? Miss Yoshie shoots me a meaningful look. I think you'll be fine. Fine? Fine? How can you say that? I'm obviously in danger. You're not in that part of town, ma'am. I mean, you're, you're beautiful, but like, heck, like, I don't think anyone's going to come after you. Oh, well, I got to be going. Thanks. Hold it. Another voice stops me before I can leave. Huh? How about that blue? How's that blue fellow doing? Oh, Clara, do you miss Ren? That's right. You are the best of friends. Taking Clara into her arms, Miss Yoshie shoots me an expectant look. Ah, sorry, I left him at home today. He's in that bag of yours, isn't he? Were you going to leave without having him say hello? No way out. Sorry, Ren, you're just gonna have to grin and bear it. I take Ren out of my bag and gently pat his head to wake him up. Y yes, Ilba? Ren, uh, say hi to Clara. Ren's ears and tail <laughs> drops. <laughs> Clara stares down at him from her place in Miss Yoshie's arm. What's wrong? Still sleeping? How do you do, Clara? I'm quite well, Ren. Clara ra wags her tail happily. Miss Yoshie smiles too. This is honestly such a sweet scene. You two are just adorable together. <laughs> Now that you said hello, I'd really better be... Oh, wait, wait, dear! Uh... I'm sorry. I know that you're on your way out. I just need one more thing. I promise it'll be quick. It's night by the time Miss Yoshi let me go. Good job back there. We do what we must. Ren is curled up in my bag, exhausted from his ordeal. Despite the attitude, Clara seems rather fond of Ren. She asks about him whenever I see her. While users can adjust their all personality to some degree, they are largely shaped by their environment. As a result, you can never tell when two all will connect. Ren doesn't seem to like Clara very much, but unfortunately for him, I find the whole situation kind of funny. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright. Yeah, after she stopped me the last time, Miss Yoshie made me eat this whipped cream slathered monstrosity she made in cooking class. My stomach is killing me. I guess we should head home. Feeling like a couple of soldiers who narrowly escaped death on the battlefield, we start walking towards home. Night is in full swing on Aoyagi Street, the darkness washed away by lights and brilliant neon signs. There are no zoning laws in the old residential district. Even in the middle of the day, the crooked skyline ensures that some part of the city never sees the sun. But when night falls, things really change. That's when Ripsties comes out of the woodwork. The Ripsties are young men who form gangs or teams to brawl each other over turf. This game, if you can call it that, is also known as Rib. Rib was popular before Rhyme, so the Rib gangs look down on their digitized Rhymer cousins. They think they're a bunch of nerds trying to act cool. 
Still, more and more ripsties are making the jump to rhyme. That means everyone's looking for a fight. Suddenly, someone grabs my arm from behind. Huh? Hey, that's a brain nuts jacket, right? This man with dyed red hair. He looks younger than me. Isn't that brand worth a lot right now? A green and green haired man approaches next to green. Red and green. Is it Christmas or something? <laughs> man, the jacket's totally my grill. You're a dude. The red haired one gives me a phony smile. You can buy one in front of the station. I try to jerk my arm away, but the redhead glares and grips me tighter. Hold on, man. What's with the attitude? I want this jacket. I want it now. You diff. You know who we are? Butt bomb! Yeah, that's right. So what? Think you're better than us? The green haired guy flashes the tattoo on his wrist. A winking woman with enormous boba straddling a big pink bomb. Wow. I killed a guy who put that on my skin. <laughs> wait, seriously? Wait, wait, you're telling me that's the tattoo? Why would you have that as a tattoo? And it's called Big Bomb. In any case, I haven't heard of Buck Bomb. Oh, it's Buck Bomb. <laughs> Obviously, these two were small time looking for fights and built their crud. That is one ugly tad. What did you say? I said, the tad looks like poo. Yeah, what gang do you roll with? Don't got one. Uh, you're on Mart? No freaking way. Red and Green look at each other, grinning like idiots. You for real? Rib gangs always have a tag, a piece of art member's tattoo on their body. If you don't have a tag, it means you're not a gang, and that makes you an easy target. <laughs> that means we can take him out right here. Easy peasy. Let's go for a little walk, huh? Better quit while you can. The frick? Ben looks over my shoulder, glaring at a man who's appeared behind me. Is it? He's liable to curb stomp the both of you. Who is this and why is he hot? Who are you? Uh. Green, meanwhile, has turned white as a sheet. Yo, this isn't good. What well, ain't good? That's Mizuki, the boss of dry juice. Dry juice? You know his killer technique, the fox heel drop. Just one and you'll be eating through a straw for the rest of your life. Ah! Uh, why didn't you say you were with dry juice? Let's bounce! The man behind me laughs as his two punk runs up the tails between their legs. Losers, don't start what you can't finish, right? I turn around knowing exactly who I'll see. Sup? On time to see. Hi, Mizuki. Dry Juice? It's Mizuki, leader of Dry Juice, largest of the Rip Gangs. He has tan skin, black hair, and green eyes. The symbol of his gang, a teardrop, is tattooed beneath one eye. What the hell is a fox heel drop? Yeah, I'm talking about a fancy footwork of yours. Forget the name. It's made up on the fly. Point is, you crack jaws. Not in years. Well, I remember it like it was just yesterday. You know, I don't usually see you around here at this hour. Yeah, I guess. If you finally decide to join us. He grins welcomingly, but I just shrug. Not happening. I keep telling you. You might be surprised how much you like it. He used to run with Mizuki back in the day. We got into all sorts of trouble. Though he's usually pretty laid back. He's also a guy you can depend on. Who knows when it's time to get serious. Rip fighters all think they're hot stuff. So it's pretty impressive that he's managed to unite so many to form the largest rip gang. Still have no intention of joining. Sounds like a pain in the butt. Yeah, I know. Things have been hard for us too lately. Hard how? Is your team as strong as ever? You know what I'm talking about. It's rhyme. Rhyme. Mizuki's expression darkens. Even we're losing members now. I mean, they're like... They like to say rhyme takes brain power. But that's just another way of saying it's all in your head, right? Yeah, I don't get it. Can you protect your turf with your imagination? Well, yeah, you got a point. I honestly can't blame Mizuki for feeling the way he does about Rhyme. I mean, you could make the same argument about Rip. It's just a bunch of kids playing capture the flag. I know Mizuki really cares about his team. That's probably why he can't just let Trent Hopper slide. And then there's the use disappearances. Disappearances? You heard the stories, haven't you? Entire Rip team's going missing? 
Yeah, but it's not an urban legend. It's over a decade old, too. Well, I don't know what's going on, but gangs have started disappearing again. You sure they didn't just piss off some Yakuza? Yeah, that's a weird thing. Guys will show up after a few days after they disappeared. Not all at once, just a few at a time. They don't remember a thing. Like nothing. Even their own name. It's like their brains were fried or something. Didn't they say Morphine was behind it last time? I guess Morphine's practically an urban legend too. Yeah, but still. Morphin was a legendary rip gang that dominated the scene a decade ago. The tag was a heart and cross, all in black. The gang was cloaked in mystery. All anyone really knew was that they were invisible. Naturally, rumors gathered around like flies. One popular rumor said they were behind the disappearances. Morphine's not behind it. Maybe it's those rhymers. Isn't that kind of far-fetched? Yeah, I'm kidding. It's just, those guys have been getting real cocky lately. I mean... You really think they could make people disappear, let alone wipe their memories? If stuff like that were happening, the city would be up in arms. I know, that's why I said I was kidding. Oh! Just then, we heard cheering nearby, followed by the thunder of footsteps as people raced to the scene. Mizuki skulls. Ah, freaking rhyme. Better bounce before I get the urge to break some heads. See you later. Make sure you stop by the shop sometime. Sure. Later. Mizuki waves, then stalks away, pushing through the gathering crowd. Once Mizuki is gone, I turn towards the center of the commotion. Well, Rhyme is exactly my boat. I don't have anything against it either. I was actually pretty curious the first time Mizuki brought it up. What's the matter? Nothing. L let's go. I pat Ren's head and start making my way out the alley. But then, a white light swallows the world. Before I can figure out what's going on, a ball of light appears in front of me. It gradually assumes a human form that reaches towards me with one hand. Its fingertips stroke my cheek, or at least, I think they do. What? Huh? Next thing I know, I'm at the center of the crowd. <laughs> Bodies pressing all, uh, from all sides. I'm trapped! Usui! Usui! What? A circle of life is floating above the ground and inside it. Who? A woman with eight arms appears, swaying slowly before coming to a stop. It's time for what you've all been waiting for. Rhyme! Today's first battle, player versus Route 44. So this is Rhyme. I've never seen it up close before. The eight-armed woman is Usui, who presides over all Rhyme battles. Uh, I see that there's more subtitles in between. I say woman, but for some reason, it has a deep, manly voice. I guess I gotta go for deep, manly voice for this. Usui's hands flickers. The light grows brighter, and a huge virtual screen appears overhead. The fighters are already in the ring, preparing their all mates. Will the rookie break player's winning streak? Let's find out. Player is ready for battle. Route 44, ready to go? All right, let's get this party started. Game, start! Usui lifts its hands with a gentle grace. Its elegant movements a sharp contrast to its booming voice. The monitor switches to a view of the field. The audience hoots and cheers. <laughs> Suddenly, a sharp pain shoots through my head. <laughs> the hell? It's a noise getting to me. Clutch my forehead, I glare at the crowd. Are you all right? I'm fine. We should get going. That will be for the best. I finally managed to muscle my way out of the roaring throng. Leaning against the nearby wall, I sigh and catch my breath. Who? Oh, it's the twins! Oh no, it's the twins! I look up to find a familiar duo standing in front of me. Hey! Hey there! What's the matter? Feeling sick? Crowd getting to you? Virus and trip. You two. Yeah, let's be the crowd. The four eyes is virus, the big guy's trip. I've known the brages. How are you feeling? Not great, but I'll be fine. What are you doing here anyway? Thought rhyme wasn't your thing. Just passing through. You think you're joining? Not a chance. So it's coincidence you're here right when a fight starts? 
I'm telling you, I'm not interested. What about you? What are you two doing here? We're here on business. The Rhymers have been getting a little out of hand lately. The little residential district is home to some pretty dangerous groups. These two belong to one of them. I met them ages ago when I was still a stupid teenager. Back then, I was always pissed off about something. I spent my nights trolling for brawls in Wanibashi. In the end, all that adolescent's posturing got was a trip to the hospital after I picked a fight with the wrong guy. Yeah, I was kind of a loser. The only people who really know what I got up to back then were these two and Granny. Lost touch with them until we reconnected a few years ago. By then, I got a part-time job and they had joined the Yakuza. Considering that the police here are basically Yakuza too, never really bothered me. Anyway, you two look the same as ever, like twins. We're not twins. Oh, they're not. Things going well at work? The ice cream shop, right? With the penguin aprons? Thought you got fired on your first day. I made it three days, thank you very much. I work at a junk stop. Right. What was it again? Dum dum? Humdrum junk. I've been there for a while now. The name doesn't suit you. If you ever want to lose again, um, if you ever want to let lose again, you know who to call. You got a lot of power. You could do worse. Ha! <laughs> well, I appreciate the offer. Yeah, I keep thinking about how much I'd like to see you fight again. Yeah, we're your biggest fans. Oh, 250 damage to Route 44. Is it over already? I have no idea. A roar goes from the audience, but then... Hey, you hooligans! An even louder voice cuts through the charged atmosphere. Akushima? Brandishing a megaphone, a man charges in with several police officers in tow. Ah, just what we needed. Where do you guys think you are? You're all under arrest! The match is over. Usui vanishes in a puff of smoke, and the fighters and spectators scatter. The guy with the megaphone is Akushima, a hard butt detective who's as crooked as they come. He's jail or being dozens of people on blatantly false charges. They call him the Grim Reaper of the old residential district. I think we better get going. You probably should too. Yeah. See you around. Wait, you scumbags! Get back here! We're gonna arrest every single one of you! Akushima looks like it's about to burst a blood vessel. I ignore him and take off running. Aoyagi Street is just ahead. Whoa! <laughs> As I round the corner, a motorcycle nearly runs me over. I stumble and fall backward. Hi? The bike pulls up a short distance away. I stare at the driver in a daze. He doesn't get off, but his eyes are focused on me. Something about those eyes sends a shiver down my spine. The man speeds off without saying a word. Hey! I jump up, but he's already gone. Gah! Son of a... Nearly ran me over! He didn't even apologize! I mean, near misses like that aren't usual. I mean, they aren't unusual in this part of town, but it still pisses me off! You alright? Yeah, barely. That was a close one. I'm glad you're safe. You and me both. Men's concern soothes my anger. I'm safe. That's what matters, right? I start back towards home. I enter my neighborhood and soon reach my house. I'm home! What's wrong with you, you stupid boy? Oh! Hi, Grandma! A clap of thunder greets me the moment I open the door. I know from experience that the ringing won't go away anytime soon. Do you have to shout? How else am I gonna get it through your thick skull? Granny is perched. Granny is perched menacingly on the landing, fuming as she scowls at me. I've always wondered how such an old woman can make so much noise. What are you mad about now? Don't you know? The lock. The lock? How many times have I told you to lock the door when you go to work? Uh, did I forget? I'm sorry. I was almost late for work this morning, so I ran out of the house in a hurry. Don't sorry me. What did you do to deserve such a forgetful grandchild? What do you want from me? I forgot, okay? Because you overslept again. You're 23 and still completely hopeless. You're trying to make your grandmother cry. I said I'm sorry, didn't I? Everyone screws up sometimes. You could get a gold medal in screwing up. How many times is it now? Six. 
You are completely hopeless. Granny is shaking with anger. The veins on her forehead are bulging. This is serious. She's fainted after getting too worked up before. I get it. I get it. I'll be more careful. So stop shouting already. <sighs> How many times have I heard that one? How can you rest in peace if you still can't take care of yourself? Granny snorts and stops back into the kitchen. You're still standing there? Come in before you freeze. She seems to have settled down for the moment. Relief, I take off my shoes and head inside. I might get into shouting matches like this on a daily basis, but we actually get along pretty well, all things considered. The fact that she can still yell like that is proof that she's healthy. I think her yelling is one of the things I'm going to miss when the time comes. I'm really grateful to her for raising me all by herself. Not that I ever want to say it to her face. You might regret that someday. Granny's in the kitchen, in the middle of serving up whatever she was sautéing in a frying pan. I wash my hands at the sink, grab two sets of chopsticks off the shelf and set the table. You might be wondering where my parents are. They were never the type to stay in one place. Even when they lived here with us, they would wound up and vanish for months, even years at a time. It was always like that, even when I was little. So I eventually got used to it just being granny and me. When they stopped coming back altogether, I was surprisingly okay. I guess I have granny to thank for that. After all the trouble I caused growing up, I just want to treasure all the time I have with her. A simple life is all I need. Let's eat. She lines up the food. Soma noodles, tuna stir-fried shiitake mushrooms, and boiled greens, fried fish, and miso soup. I sit down with Granny and put my hands together. Eat up. Thanks for the food. Granny, this is delicious. Is it now? Being chased by the police made me hungry, so Granny's homemade cooking really hits the spot. While stuffing my face, I feel a sharp pain shoot through my skull. Here we go again. Ugh. Another headache? I forgot to take a medicine after you eat. I won't. I've suffered from the frequent headaches ever since a youthful indiscretion led me into hospital. This is the second one today. No one's ever been able to figure out the cause ever since it started. It's been taking a medicine Granny prescribes. Did I mention Granny has a medical license? Yeah, she's kind of like a village doctor. Always giving neighborhood... Folks, checkups, and meds. Eh, Granny's awesome. She has quite a reputation for being safer than other, less competent doctors who just take your money. I can vouch for that. Her pills are the only thing that's ever helped my headaches. Thanks for the meal. After I finish eating, I take my medicine, clear the table, and head upstairs. In my room, I pull Ran out of my bag and wake him from sleep mode. The head is killing me. Thinking fresh air might help, I go out onto the balcony. The cool breeze feels nice. Lean on the handrail, I sigh and look up at the sky. The overlapping buildings obscure my view. It hasn't always been like this. The island was once a beautiful place. Minorijima is a remote island on the southwest of mainland Japan. This island is known for its blue seas, white sands, and lush forests. Or at least, it was. It's ancient history now. Now, Landum Jail dominates the island occupying nearly a full third of its landmass. The huge wall separates Platinum Jail from the old residential district, so no one can even see what's inside. You see big shots from the Toei Corporation, the company that built Platinum Jail on TV all the time. Back when I was a kid, the Toei Corporation was trying to evict people from the island so they could start development. They managed to convince most of the island's residents to leave with promises of luxurious homes and exorbitant sums of money. But there were still some people who were too stubborn to go, like us. We weren't about to abandon our homes, no matter what juicy bait they dangled in front of us. For a while, Toei left us alone. Toei's probably stance on the issue was that they didn't want to force people out. In reality, however, they were already plotting to show us the arrow of our ways. It began with a reduction in basic utilities, explained as maintenance that never seemed to end. The livable sphere slowly shrank until the remaining residents were forced into what is now known as the Old Residential District. This once beautiful island is in shambles. How could the government allow this? Some of the islanders begged the government for help, but their petitions were all rejected. Finally, three years ago, Toei started requiring residents of the Old Residential District to get permission before they could leave the island. Permission they wouldn't grant, ever. I'm sure Toei's justification is that it's our fault for not leaving when we had the chance. The noise at my feet snaps me out of my reverie. Ilba, what are you going to do with the data from that last email? Email? 
Friend's question startles me up to handrail. I completely forgot. Back at the store, while those kids were giving me trouble, my coil downloaded some kind of file. Was it a virus? I didn't detect anything. So what is it? It's the type of game where the player character gains experience points and levels by doing battle with enemy characters. Oh, an RPG. Does it cost anything? Nah, it's free. Ha. Huh. At least those stupid bats to make me buy something by accident. Is it a trial version? That is unclear. Well, if there's nothing fishy about it, I guess it could give me a try. I'll have anything better to do. Shall I start it? Please do. Understood. Cradling right in my arms, I go back inside and sit on the bed. What? What am I supposed to do with this? Save me. Someone. Please. What? Save me from this place. Okay, save me from this place. Yeah, got it. Talk about retro. I bet those kids have never seen anything like this. Even I've only seen games like these in old videos. The game's logo appears after the message from the princess. What's the game? Don't say rhythm. Silent oath. Frank, this is retro as heck. Huh. And it's so old, it almost feels new. I press the start button. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh my god, I'm playing a retro game in a freaking visual novel. I'm not playing this, by the way. My hands are way up here. This is all a cutscene. My god. <laughs> oh man. Oh, frick. What am I even watching? I don't know what I'm watching. What, what, what is this side quest? Is, is this going to be important to the plot? Frick. Okay. To be continued. To be Does that have episodes or something? Looks like. Looks like it. Oh, well, I guess it was the perfect length to kill some time. I. So I played a little bit of this game. Ran all the way into the ocean. Probably yeeted myself into it and to be continued. Another thing, like there was a treasure chest, a perfectly good treasure chest right there. Why didn't I go for it? Why did I just straight up yeet myself into the ocean? What was wrong with me? Did I, am I trying to look for secrets or something? I don't really know if it was all that entertaining, but I might play more when the next installment comes out. A yawn spills from my mouth as I close the game. I was so focused on a game, I didn't realize how tired I am. Better get ready for bed. I close the sliding glass door to the balcony and it's curtain and head to the bathroom. Anyway, that was the first part of Dramatical Murder. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, the link to the game will be in the description below. God, this is a classic. I, I honestly never thought that I would actually come back and actually play this game. I never actually got to play this game way back in the day when it released. Because, like, heck, I, I just didn't have the money back then. And I'm really glad we managed to have a chance to play it. This is a classic boys love uh, dating sim, by the way. And it does contain some, like, pretty intense scene later on. And if you guys do want to stick around for this journey, yeah, uh, I'd recommend you guys to do so. But anyway, thank you all so much for coming. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.